True living Africa. True living Africa. Hello, Africa. Welcome to True Living Africa. I am Uyok Hansen. And I am Oyin Talabi. And we are your, your wellness, wellness coaches. coaches. We're here to support you on your journey to stay well. Follow us on Instagram at True Living Africa, on at Africa Business Radio, on Instagram, Twitter, and www.africabusinessradio.com. Now, today we have something special for our audience. We're starting a series called the Obesity Series. Mm -hmm. Big deal. Very big big deal. deal. And um, fitness and the fitness trends have been all the rage. And, you know, people have kind of wondered how come, you know, fitness really took Nigeria by storm, especially the Lagos, you know, Lagos, yeah. the, the main cities, Lagos, Abuja, and so forth. And it just kind of seemed like a trend. But what people don't realize is that obesity basically became um, one of the world's... Leading l- causes of, um, of, of, death. Of, of death, of illnesses, mm-hmm. uh, the underlying causes of a lot of illnesses. Right. And obesity is one of the world number one health problems yeah and the reason why obesity had become such a big deal is because it's chronic and um, also because um, it is basically the precursor to many other kinds of conditions and i'm sure we hear this all the time you know obesity would you know lead to to diabetes type 2 diabetes Mm -hmm. lead to high blood pressure hypertension and you know hypertension is the silent killer of our breadwinners in africa yeah um certain cancers and even on the psychological side obesity would lead to you know low self-esteem lack of confidence in some cases social isolation and and depression yeah so obesity is a big deal and it's it something that, issue. yeah, it's a big issue and it's something that we're going to be talking about over the next few episodes. Um, what does it mean to be obese um, and how do you um, quote and unquote cure it, if you will? Yeah. Um, how do you live with it? How do you get rid of it and different strategies that you can use? And so we're going to we're yeah. going to dig in. So I guess a good place to start will be to talk about um, some of the causes of obesity. Mm-hmm. And also um, we have lack of physical like, um, activity right. as one. Then we also have overeating. Yes. And then we have genetics. So people have always asked the question that is there a fat a fat cell? Gene. Yeah. A fat gene. Yeah. The answer is actually yes. There mm-hmm. is a fat gene. Some people are just... Um, designed to have more body fat than others Mm -hmm. and also there is that then there's also having a diet that is high in simple carbohydrates um there's that whole well frequency of eating comes back to overeating right and also you're eating too much without expending all the energy Mm -hmm. then there are medications right so some medications can throw off your system so if you're taking particularly things like um for st- uh, that contain steroids in them right most people tend to have issues with those then also there are psychological issues mm-hmm. um factors as well that can cause um obesity that can lead to obesity so traumatic a traumatic event right um can lead to that and then there are also now other lifestyle issues that you know the jury still out as to do how do we classify these kind of diseases so there's hypothyroidism there's insulin resistance mm-hmm. there's um there's p pos pcos pcos yeah. as well there's cushing syn- um, syndrome so there are all these other um diseases that can lead to obesity yeah and so i'm particularly um, from when, because I had, I have a fitness background. Um, you know, most people, I also was the opinion that, okay, if someone is obese, 
it's because they're not moving. Right. It was there. Enough. They're overeating. Yeah. They were overeating and not moving enough. And, you know, it was all about, okay, take this meal plan and try it and blah, blah, blah and move. And then, you know, as I um, delved more into the wellness part of it and lifestyle part of it, realized that no, there's so many other issues that can affect um, obesity that has absolutely nothing to do with um, with physical activity and what people are eating, even though the eating part always, it always, it always it's also in. tied yeah. in, yeah. but it's not the it root just cause. Makes it, you know, it just makes it harder. So what yeah. it is, yeah, it's not always the root cause. Mm-hmm. And and for us to have lasting, um, lasting experiences or lasting success in anything, it's always best to go to the root cause. Right. What is the root cause for? This person's obesity because it's not always the same for everybody as we've listed. Right. I know. So how does one then move forward? Yeah. So it's like you said, you know, spot on is different for different people. Yeah. Um, but generally speaking though, it is when, you know, it's in the medical community, you define obesity as uh, obese conditions as when you, it, you have you take in too much more calories and energy than you actually You're expend. Expanding. So that's the so that's sort of the foundation of the problem. Yeah. So things like you said, like the medical, um, the underlying medical, medical conditions, conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome (PCOS) um, or hyperthyroidism, those are conditions that would make it more difficult for an obese person to lose weight. And some medication will make people put on weight. Yeah. Um, where they weren't putting on weight before. But it's also still kind of tied to um, energy in and energy out. But yeah. in some cases, like I heard, like there are cases where people say, oh, but I eat, you know, like I've dieted all my way down to like 500 calories and I'm not losing any weight and so forth. Then in that, in those cases, you then really want to look at your underlying. Yeah, I guess even from what you've said and, you know, just processing it, it's all comes down to a metabolic problem. There's something affecting your metabolism. Right. So that you're not efficiently burning off the energy that you're taking in. Right. So something is affecting it. And so it's now to find what's the the cause, what's affecting your own Mm -hmm. or this person's um, metabolic problems. So obesity is, in essence, a metabolic problem. Yes, it's the it's That's a, it's a, a burning. simple way yes, of, it's, it's of, a simple way of, of looking it. at it. Absolutely. And um, in case you're wondering um, who you define as obese or overweight, there's a simple test where the the BMI test. If your BMI yeah. is over 20, 30. 20, 25? I think it's twenty five. If you're about thirty thirty five year, um, years old and mm-hmm. your BMI is greater than thirty, then you are obese. Yeah. So that's like obese level two. The obese level one <laughs> is a BMI of 25 to 30. Level and one, level yes, three. Yes, there's level two obesity and there's level three obesity. Uh, we know those kinds where, you know, people have to be lifted. They are yeah. they no longer can move efficiently and so Those forth. ones I'm convinced at that particular point in time that that is now more of a psychological issue. There's right. an addiction problem that is going on and so even when we're saying psychological it's not even necessarily that there was a trauma Mm -hmm. it could just be an addiction problem because a lot of these fast foods that we eat Mm -hmm. are full of additives Mm -hmm. and so if you get addicted to something Mm -hmm. and then it's now a need so it might not even be a physical addiction it can also be that psychological comfort eating there's a trigger right and so you're eating to to satisfy that um, you're eating trigger. emotional eating yeah. and, and especially when you're hooked on fast food. So when you eat, um, yes, yeah, um, most sorry, people like that mm-hmm. tend to have enablers. Mm. Most because there's somebody feeding them. If you have to be lifted, that means you can't get your food yourself. Oh, gotcha. Somebody is enabling. And even before you that. get to that place, right? I mean, that's, that's the extreme. But before you even get to a place where you can't move and people have to bring food to you, yeah. Um, when you're in a situation where part of the causes of obesity, like we said before, you're in a situation where you're eating a lot of calorie dense foods. Yeah, and not you know, moving enough. You know how I'm a big advocate of real food? Like you have to be able to trace, you know, the grandparents of something you're eating. 
so you know when food is real it makes more sense than food that's not real so not yeah. real like processed highly processed foods when we eat even real foods that have that are very calorie dense and i'll give you an example you know sometimes you say oh you know but plantain is you know there's plantain there's we have there's our yam. plantain and we have our, our yams yeah and then we have our beans then we have our chicken on the face of it, you know, all that looks good until you see how some of us prepare this stuff. Yeah. So imagine a bowl of fried plantain with beans porridge that's made with, you know, loads of palm oil. Yeah. And then I have my chicken stew. Mind you, my stew is fried. And my and yam and is fried. My yam is fried. And yeah. my chicken was fried before I put it in the stew. And then portions. And then, yes. So I now I eat large all, yes, portions. Yeah, I have large, large portions of that. Um, so when you, when we eat calorie rich foods like that consistently, we, we get into, um, a calorie surplus, mm -hmm. which then we, be, we begin to see the pounds packing on over time. And you then start to, be overweight and you know that's really how obesity starts when you when you get some, into the overweight zone for some people for some people because i i'm i'm partial to those that have a metabolic problem oh, of course i'm very partial because that side is always so underserved mm -hmm. i know because i guess maybe haven't worked with women for so long so many people would be exercising constantly and like you said eating very low calorie foods just trying to manage that whole energy in and out mm -hmm. but it's still not shifting well i would say this right i would say this usually um in my experience with um clients i've got underlying medical conditions like pcos and hormonal imbalances and so yeah. forth with some, when they, when they create a true calorie deficit, they are able to at least initially lose some. They lose, lose some, some weight. yeah. Then they hit a plateau. Yes. It's, so, so, so what I think we need to know is that, um, managing obesity, um, through weight loss is not a linear process. Yes. It's, it's not as simple exactly. as people make it sound like, oh, week one, I'm going to lose five pounds. Yeah. So it could, it could be an 18 month journey. And it could also, be a five year journey. It could be a five year journey. Yeah. And what happens with a lot of um, clients who present themselves with medical conditions like PCOS um, is that they psychologically already feel coming into the program that, oh, I've got PCOS, I'm not going to be able to lose weight. But the truth is, I have treated mm. um, clients with PCOS who have been able to successfully lose yeah. weight. And a lot of the challenges come from under reporting what they actually eat. Cause and use because I had a client right. who, um, sorry to cut, mm -hmm. cut in, who's um, wasn't shifting. Mm -hmm. I concluded that this was a hormonal thing, and she, but then she was like, "Oh, so," and then upon further investigation, found out that she was taking birth control pills. Right, and so there was there was so a, that had hormonal, thrown, yeah, yeah that imbalance. was what had thrown her hormones off. off and yeah, it was like and just uh, makes it more difficult. And so when you're able, when you're able to pinpoint those things and, you know, work around them, then, you know, obesity management becomes, becomes easier. Make, yes. That's to make sense. Because mm -hmm. like you said, it's not a linear thing. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that could be affecting. It could be toxins that your body is just intolerant to. That could be from your cleaning detergent. Right. Who knows? Who knows? And it could be, you know, like you said, environmental factors. Yeah. Um, and, and inflammation from the foods that we eat and even the like you talked about the processed foods earlier when we have too much processed foods especially when we have the sugar and the sodas yeah we tend to you know have some people would have that the cokes or the you know the sugary drinks two three times a day or what they call the packaged juices yeah and they think it's fruit juice and have that instead of water and so there's a lot of calories going in and that not, we're not accounting for. Yes, and not enough movement. Another thing that um, happens with one of the under another underlying cause of obesity that we haven't mentioned is yo-yo dieting. Actually, yes. Yeah. So people who tend to diet a lot. I mean, research has shown that the people who <laughs> the people who dieted last year are the people who are overweight this year. I actually wrote an article called diets are meant to fail they are designed mm -hmm. to fail mm -hmm. and 
<laughs> a part of me is like a man probably designed the first diet <laughs> just to get, get, keep with women in check. Right. I know, but I agree with you that yo-yo dieting is a cause of a lot of underlying because of the starvation issues. and the binging and the yeah. deprivation, the and overeating. Just continue in that whole cycle of without, eating disorders. Yeah. Yeah. And you never really achieve, you never really get your lasting goals. No. Instead, you end up opening the door to other issues. Right. I know. But that's interesting. I hadn't read that, I haven't heard that. You know, the dieters this year are the obese ones for next year. Right, because it's, it's, it, it makes they, sense. It's, yeah, it makes sense. Because you fall off the keep... wagon, you binge. Right. And then you're back to square and then one. You're so discouraged and then you just keep binging. Yeah, and you're back to square one with more luggage because you now have the psychological issues of you failed. Mm-hmm. You failed at this diet. Mm-hmm. And then you now find another diet. You find the maple syrup diet. You find the Cambridge diet. And mm-hmm. you just keep trying. And the more luggage is not even just only psychological. Mm. It's also physiological because when you gain the the weight back, you gain back a higher percentage of fat. fat. Yeah. Um, And your fat to muscle ratio increases because typically when people diet, they tend to lose muscle mass. Yeah. They sacrifice muscle for, for weight loss, yes. And then, yeah, for weight loss, yes. Mm-hmm. And then that affects even your bones, bone density as well. Absolutely. And your metabolism, because now you don't have, you haven't got metabolically active tissue, your, your, your muscles are suffering. Yeah. And so when you have fat packed back on, then you're not even, you're not even accomplishing anything. So you're, you're, you're in a worse place, you know, than when you started. So, and that's why it's important that even with underlying medical conditions, it's you know we and which is what we're going to be talking about you know in the yeah. in the further in the future series how to actually look at obesity management or weight management as a lifestyle as opposed to a number on the scale and different yeah. things that you can do so that even if so that weight loss is not the be all and end all of what you're trying to achieve so the focus what you're saying is focus shouldn't necessarily be weight loss Focus right. should just be let's be healthy. Right, exactly. Let's 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 um So it's not about losing weight to get to because to I want to be skinny. Number, yes. It's about being a healthier weight for my height. Exactly. A healthier weight for my lifestyle mm-hmm. type thing. So that it's all encompassing. Exactly. I think my main takeaway from our conversation now is that the focus the first point of call mm-hmm. when you're dealing with obesity is to even find the root cause. What is what is where is this coming where from? Where is this coming yeah. from? My lifestyle choices and looking, and it's a lifestyle mm-hmm. thing. It's a what am I eating? What am I doing or not doing? Yeah, and um, what kind of medication am I on? Have I got any imbalances, any underlying medical conditions? Have I been dieting too strictly? Am I drinking too much sugar? Yeah, um, that you're not paying attention to, right? And with movement. People underrate movement so much. It's yeah. unbelievable. Do yeah. you know that on a typical lounge day, you may you realize that you may not even have taken 300 steps? And with the lockdown that has happened, that was the story of most people. Right. And lack of movement. I mean, the, the most movement is from the bedroom to the living room to, to the, the kitchen, kitchen. <laughs> back to the living room, back to bedroom. And going to so. the kitchen is an event. <laughs> You know, at some point in my house, we would, we would you know, we would joke about, okay, so where are we going today? <laughs> Let's go to the kids' room. <laughs> Let's get dressed and go to the kids' room. OMG. Oh my goodness! So, so yeah, the movement so. is so, and and you don't, you don't, um, you underrate movement until you start to actually keep count yeah. of how many steps you're taking. And according to you know, um, proven research. The minimum number of steps a day that you should take to keep yourself to to classify Be yourself active. as active is ten thousand, and that's about a two hour leisurely leisurely walk, right? Um, or about eight kilometers. Yeah. How many of us actually? How many do people that. do that? Because yeah. we're sedentary, even when, even outside of the lockdown. Yeah. Um, the majority of our activity evolved around getting up in the morning, getting dressed, getting in the car. So you're driving to your location, Mm -hmm. you get to work, you sit. Probably sitting two, three hours in traffic, depending on where you're coming from. And then different meetings, so Mm -hmm. you're still sitting. Absolutely, and having snacks and, you know, grabbing from the, you know, peanut jar, crackers. Getting movement in the workplace is 
actually a big thing that we need to deal with yeah. as um as a community as yeah. in make the workplace a little it's more a, it's a global health active. it's yeah. a global health issue and Because then from the workplace you get back in your car for those car. of you who drive and you're back in the so you're sitting essentially maybe 11 12 hours a day and you get home and what do you do sit in front of the TV grab some dinner you know and and, and then crawl to bed and crawl to bed so if you count your total number of steps you may not have even taken because for those of us who have got drivers or yeah would have parked right in front of your office Office entrance and all of that. So, it's it's hard. It's a, it, we have to be deliberate about about, about movement, movement, about movement. And some people say, "Oh, I don't eat much. I don't even eat much." Where am I? And you realize that the reason why you're you're overweight but not eating a lot is already because you're you're in metabolic decline. Yeah, because nothing is your your our bodies are designed to move, and you're not doing anything with your body. Yeah, and so your muscles are even atrophying their. So yeah. think about it this way: you're not actually starting the engine, right? So the engine has of the car has not necessarily revved mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. to for you're not you getting to burn warm anything. at all. You're not burning yeah. anything. Yeah. So everything you're eating is just sort of getting stored as excess energy for the rainy day. That yeah. there'll be a famine, and then right. your body will need to right and <laughs> feed then, on itself exactly, to survive. Exactly, and then there's no famine, you know, and and so you just keep packing it on. So, so what do you think? What's our way forward? So our way forward and what we're going to be discussing in future episodes is what the different interventions yeah. for obesity management. And we're going to start Because to talk about are. weight loss, yeah. how to achieve sustainable weight loss in a way that you don't make weight loss by all means your goal. Yes. You know, and that's why we use the yeah. word sustainable. Yeah, Sustainable means you should be able to keep the weight off for three to five years minimum. Keep it off for life. And don't be shocked if we encourage a surgical route. There's oh, yes. absolutely nothing wrong. Especially depending on the level of obesity yeah. that you're in. There are different other strategies, your know, surgical route and yeah. and um, there are a lot of extreme, especially for extreme extraction routes. of yeah. um, stubborn fat and stuff like that. Yeah. So we're going to be looking at all of that in the coming weeks. Yeah. And um, hopefully enlighten our audience on the way forward with obesity and weight management. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So thank you guys for listening. And um, I enjoy talking about that topic. It's very close to my heart. And um, again, follow us at africabusinessradio.com, um, Africa Business Radio on Instagram, Twitter, and at True Living Africa on Instagram. Until then, I'm Uyok Hansen. And I'm Oyin Talabi. And um, thanks for tuning in. Yes. See, see you, you next soon. time. <laughs>